Hi, welcome to the first Hammer tutorial. This is going to be setting up Hammer and general user interface of Hammer World Editor. We need to load Hammer, but before you can do that, you have to load the game that you want to map edit for, let it get to the menu screen, and then exit it. This creates the file structure that we need for the tools to be happy. Mainly gameinfo.txt. This is the text file that defines what files the game and the tools should load. So let's go ahead and load up Hammer. There will be a few ways to do this depending on the game that you're using. The first method will be using an authoring tool. These are usually kept up to date and Valve very rarely breaks these. Valve is always doing updates and improving their games, but in the process they do break things. So there will be workarounds in the future. Do note that this process may change, but it should for the most part stay the same. Games with authoring tools um, are as displayed. Alien Swarm, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, Portal 2, and maybe a few others. The old legacy method is Source SDK. You'll still use this for games like, um, I believe, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch and Half-Life 2 Episode 2. So if you want to edit for Portal 2, this is what this tutorial is going to be shot in, but do note that these concepts work for every version of Hammer. So to do that, you'll just run and install this, and you'll get this little green window. Now for the method of... I'll use Counter-Strike Source. This is launching out of the bin directory. What we have to do is go to our Steam Apps folder, and then Common, Counter-Strike Source, and Bin. We'll then scroll down to Hammer.exe. You can create a shortcut on your desktop if you like, and you'll double-click it. It should load right up and be very happy. This is a fresh install, by the way, and you should just be able to load a map. Easy peasy. So we'll close that out. And then the last method will be through source SDK. To do this, you'll double click on source SDK after it's installed. And then if it's your first time launching the tool, um, it'll copy some files. So we'll just let that run through really quick. Now, once that's done, you'll get um, SDK release notes. It'll say when it's last updated. It'll usually be a long long time ago. So we can just close that out and then you'll be able to load your old games from there. You can select the engine version, um, like 2006 has Deathmatch in it and 2009 is Episode 1 and 2 in Portal. So we'll just close that out. Now if you've installed Source SDK, which you probably have, when you go back to load Hammer out of the bin directory, which you should be doing, you'll now get this game configuration thing. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up Hammer for your game. Now note, you do not need to do this with an authoring tools. If you're using an authoring tools, just buffer past this part. So we'll click OK, and we'll load it up. And now we'll see um, invalid game, see program files, Steam apps, your account, and then the Half-Life 2 HL2 found in V project. Hammer uses an environmental variable, so we just need to go ahead and update that. So all we'll have to do is close that out, click Start, right-click on Computer, go to Properties, It'll open up our system properties. This process will be different on Windows XP and possibly Windows Vista. Google how to change environmental variables in your operating system, and you should receive instructions on how to do this. You'll click Advanced System Settings and then Environmental Variables. Now, do know if you change anything else in here, you could possibly break your computer. So let's not break our computer. We're going to scroll down in uh, User Variables for your account to the project. I'm going to click edit, and you'll see that it has that respective path that was throwing the error. We just want to browse to our location that has gameinfo.txt, copy this, and paste it into this V project. Click OK, 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 reload hammer. And now that error is gone, now we're ready to begin our map. So now I'm going to load Portal 2 Authoring Tools and Valve Hammer Editor because that's what I'm using. I'm using Portal 2 for this. So at first, you'll pre be presented with a window um, where everything's grayed out. So we need to open a map. So click File, and then New. And this will give you a blank workspace. So now let's go over the interface. We have our tools on the left, our modifiers on the top, and grouping tools. Um, and over on the right, we have our other tools. Um, like select in our texture browser. If you'd like to move any of these tools around, if you click and drag on them, you can move them around and put them pretty much wherever you want. So I have mine set up however I want. As you map, you'll come to learn how you want your hammer set up. 
The first tool on the left is the selection tool. Hotkey is Shift S. I'll use hotkeys a lot, so it's best that you get to learn them. Um, the camera tool and magnify tool, I really don't use. Never really found need for them. There's other ways to use them, and it's just faster. The little sphere with the ball on top is the entity tool. We'll use this to place player spawns, lighting information, and just various entities around the map, such as doors and such. This is the block tool, or brush tool. Those two terms are used interchangeably. And the hotkey is shift B. This is what we use to create walls, floors, ceilings, roofs, everything that is not a prop. The next thing is the face edit sheet. This is the also known as the texture application tool. The hotkey is shift A. We use this to apply textures and materials to the faces in our world. The next one is the apply current texture. This will apply the texture to every face that you have selected. The hotkey is shift T even though it's not labeled. Decals tool. It applies decals to your world for whatever texture you have selected. The hotkey for this is shift D. The next tool is overlay. The overlay tool is like a super hardcore decal that has way more control over it, but it's a little more expensive to process. We'll go over that later. Hotkey is shift O. This next one with the slanted yellow uh, angle to it is the clipping tool. It's used to cut and slice and split brushes. The hotkey is shift X. It's a very useful tool. The next one is the vertex tool. The hotkey for this is shift V. It's used to edit vertices on brushes so we can get a more accurate or more complex brush shape. So the first thing you want to do is go over to the right under texture group and click browse. We're looking for a no draw texture. It'll be yellow and say no draw. There, are, there may be a few. You want tools slash tools no draw. So just double click it, and you'll now see your active texture is no draw. Now select the brush tool or hotkey shift B, and now we're able to begin placing brushes on our level. We'll just drag a, bro a box here, and we'll notice that it's represented in the three 2D views as well as the 3D view. To move your camera around, you can hold spacebar and click and you can move your mouse around. If you hit Z with your mouse in the 3D view, it makes it so you use your mouse to look. If you hold spacebar, click and drag in a 2D view, it pans it. Scroll wheel zooms in and out in all views. Your number keys also set a zoom height for your 2D views. One in two will set your draw distance in the 3D view. So if you're on a slower computer, you may want to set your draw distance closer. Or if you're on a better computer and you want to see more, you will set it further away. Now, once you have your brush outlined in your 2D views, you should see it in your 3D represented by this wireframe box. Just hit enter and it'll create. If your box doesn't look like this, this is probably because your camera is set to a different mode. If you hover over camera in the top left, this will give you your options for how you want to view your level in Hammer. There's 3D wireframe, which no one ever uses. 3D flat, which is good for blocking out levels. There's 3D textured, which is what you'll use when you're texturing, and you'll spend the most time in this. Um, 3D textured shaded polygons. Note this is broken in some maps. But what it does is it applies a different shading to different faces of brushes, so you can see depth in the level easier in Hammer. There is the light map grid. This we'll go over later. And the 3D smooth group. Again, we'll go over that later. So for now, we're just going to stay in the textured view, and we've created a brush. Now there's a thing called a grid, and you want to keep on grid because it's important for the compiler. It makes it easier, and you get faster compile times with it. So to enlarge or decrease the size of the grid, you use left and right bracket. Now I'm pressing the left bracket, and it gets smaller. I'm pressing the right bracket, and it gets bigger. My grid size is represented in the lower right hand corner where it says snap on grid 64. If you press shift W or if you go to map and snap to grid, it will unlock your brushes from the grid. This is typically unadvised unless you're doing detailing work, which again we'll go over later. So now with snap off, I can move the brush around freely, which is not what I want to do right now. So for these purposes of this tutorial, keep snap on. We're also going to decrease our grid size a little bit. I'm going to set it to 16. 
and I'm going to decrease the size of this brush. To do that, I'm just going to go into the side view and drag it down. And you'll see the change is instantly reflected in the 3D view. If I want to move the brush, I just simply click and drag it, and it will move around wherever I want. I'm going to place it directly in the center of the map. The center of the map is represented by these teal lines in each 2D view. Let's go ahead and create some walls. We do this with the brush tool again. So I'm just going to hit Shift B, and then in my side view, I'm going to create a wall, which is just a vertical brush. Now I'll strike Enter, and it'll create the brush. Now for speed purposes, you can copy brushes. Since this room is just a square, it'll have four walls that are the same size. I'm going to hold Shift and drag this brush all the way over here, and then let go of it. This will create a copy of it. If you use Photoshop, it's Alt for that, but this is called a Shift Drag. Now I'm also going to copy both of these. You can select multiple brushes by holding Control. I'm going to copy them and rotate them. But before we do that, let's explore some more hammer configuration to make our mapping easier. So let's go to Tools, and then Options. And then in our General, there's a few things you want to configure here. We want autosave enabled. I have mine set to 15 minutes, and I give it a gigabyte of memory to use, and it's going to save five iterations of a map. And I gave it um, an autosave directory of hammer autosave. That should be the default. Now, the undo levels I have set to 5,000. I believe the default is 50. You'll want to set your undo levels higher. The higher the undo level, the more memory hammer will take, and it does increase the odds of hammer crashing. But just save early, save often, and this won't be an issue. When you have the undo levels, you'll be glad. We're not going to do anything else in the general tab. In the 2D tab, we're going to turn on default to 15 degree rotations, and we're also going to do automatic infinite selection in 2D windows, no enter. Also, we're going to check allow nudge key selection for object slash vertex, um, and reorientate primitives on creation in the active 2D window. If you just carbon copy these settings, this might actually be best for you. It will make sure we have the same hammer experience while you follow the tutorials. In the 3D view, this is all dependent on your computer. The back clipping plane is how far you can see. If I set that really close, we'll see the wall shows up of darkness where nothing's drawn. If you have a really good computer, set these to the max by all means. The model render distance and detail render distance, they say exactly what they say. And this is the navigation of how fast you move in your map in the 3D view. So we're just going to leave those alone. You can come back here and tweak these at a later time if you'd like. And we're just going to click OK, change nothing else in there. But after both these textures are selected, I'm going to hold Shift and just drag them off to the side. Now I have my copy over here, but I need to rotate them. We've turned on 15 degree snap rotation. Um, Hammer Editor and Source Engine aren't exactly a fan of weirdly rotated brushes. So we want to try to keep that to a minimum. So the 15 degree snap rotation will lock it to 15 degrees when we rotate, which is super good for when we're making walls like this and allows you to edit really fast. So to change what your selection is in Hammer from scale, skew, or rotate, once the brushes are selected, just left click in the box and you'll see that the grab points have changed to little circles. So now we can rotate this and you'll see it snaps to 15 degrees and we're just going to move it into place and we'll see that it's changed if you click again you'll get these this is stretch and skew um, i don't use it much i'm just going to control z to put that back and then if we click again we're back to our stretch and scale where i can enlarge or decrease the size of these brushes so now for my roof i'm going to copy the floor and just drag it up for the purpose of this tutorial, it's literally just a box. We just want to get you used to the brush tool. Now we need to texture our box. I'm going to increase the size of my 3D view by grabbing in the middle and pulling to the right and down. This will make it full screen. If you would like to auto size your viewports back to um, equal sizes, Control A will automatically put them back to the default size. And then Shift Z will maximize the last active window. A lot of hotkeys, you'll eventually drill them into your brain. So now we're going to hold down Shift A 
or open the face edit sheet. And we're going to click browse on the material. I'm just going to use the dev textures. Most games have these. These are the famous gray and orange textures. I'm just going to double click it and we'll see that's now the active. Now this window will stay up and you'll see that my cursor has turned into a paint bucket. This allows me to apply textures to a wall or face. So I'm going to right click on a face and it will apply that texture. I'm going to right click on the bottom and it will also apply that texture. I'm going to click browse now and change to the orange. I'm going to apply this face, this texture to the faces of the walls. So now we have our room from the inside that looks great, but on the outside there's all no draw. No draw basically doesn't render a texture. It's cheaper and it's just a good practice to get into. Always create your brushes in no draw and then texture them with a face edit sheet. That's the proper way to create brushes. Just do it. You'll come to appreciate it when we go over optimization at a later time. Now we need to place a player spawn. Player spawns are really easy. They should be the default entity for whatever editor you're under. So shift E or entity tool. We'll select the little pillar with the ball at the top. And we just click in our 3D view to place the entity. You should get a Gordon Freeman. If you're in Counter-Strike, you'll get a terrorist model or a counter-terrorist model. So now we'll get this guy with his glasses and beard. If you want to change what he is, you hold down Alt and Enter. This is the object properties. Or you can right-click on your entity in a 2D view and click properties, or simply double-click on the entity in your 3D view. This is the object properties window. There's a few categories here that we'll go over. The first is the class. This is the type of entity. You see there's already a preset list of everything as well as all of the settings that they could possibly have. I'm going to set this back to an info player start as that's the spawn point for Portal 2. We have outputs, inputs, model, flags, and viz groups. And we'll go over these at a later time as they're more advanced for what we're doing right now. Once you have your spawn point placed, just simply press apply and then click cancel to close it. Now we have our player in a box. We need to save our level before we can load it. So I'm going to click save as. I'm just going to save this on my desktop. Tutorial 1. Now we need to compile our level. To compile our level, you can press the hotkey of F9 on your keyboard. You can click file, run map, or you can click this little guy here, which is uh, like three little dots, I guess. So we'll click that, and you should get this dialog that says run map. For now, we're just going to leave all of these tick boxes alone, and I'm going to tick don't run the game after compiling. If you leave this box unchecked, it will automatically load the game and load your map after you're compiling. While this does sound like a convenience, it's not that efficient to have the game loading and closing every time you compile. I personally keep the game open on my taskbar and just minimize it. So once everything is set to normal, 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 click OK. And you'll get a window that pops up and it'll promptly go away really quick. This is a very basic level so it won't take long to compile. You might get an in-hammer compile, which won't be a uh, command prompt window. It'll be white and you won't be able to use hammer while it's compiling. Hammer may also say that it stopped responding. For this level, since it's just a box, it should compile in less than five seconds. So from here, we're going to go ahead and load up our game. I'm testing in Portal 2. So we'll just load up. And then we'll load our map by opening the console by pressing the tilde key, type map, and then the map name. Then the map will load. And after a few moments, we should be in our level. There we go. We're in our level. It's just a simple box. But we can jump around and walk, and you've created your first level for Hammer. It's not pretty, but now you have a basic understanding of the brush tool and how to create brushes and a room. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I will be slowly updating all of my tutorials to provide you guys with more accurate information and better mapping practices. Thanks for watching.